So this is the Commodore 1541 floppy drive. And uh, if you're not familiar, this is one of the least reliable and can be the most frustrating pieces of retro technology on the planet. Now, don't get me wrong, back in the day, they were fantastic and they were how most of my friends loaded most of their software. But over time, the heads became unreliable and these drives just had just a huge number of issues and they can be really frustrating to get working. And in fact, if you look on YouTube, there are tons of repair videos on trying to get these drives working. But I have a new weapon in the battle for 1541 diagnostics, and it is this from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. It is the 1541 diagnostic cartridge, and it does a lot of tests that can help you figure out what the heck is wrong with these drives. And so uh, this was designed by the legend C64 Istanbul, who has made a lot of my favorite projects on the internet. And uh, so this cartridge takes a capacitor and a ROM and optionally a reset button. And this is so cool. A couple of little teeny tiny LEDs soldered backwards so that it looks like these things have little power LEDs on them, as well as a couple of current limiting resistors. So it's a relatively easy project to build. And it's something that you can keep in your toolbox and pop it out and try to figure out what the heck is wrong with your 1541. Now, of course, I will have a link to PCB Way in the description and a link to this project in particular. I was able to order this project along with two other ones for a total of 40 bucks shipped to my house in Florida. So I ordered um, 10 of these, 10 of another project, and 10 of another project, including shipping, had the whole things made to my door in about a week and uh, just at an awesome price. And so I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video and for helping me keep this gear alive. All right, so I figured I might do a little bit of chatting while putting this thing together. Um, I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love having things like this that are just a single purpose device. Um, you know, if I have the ROM somewhere, I have a hard time, you know, I have a hard time finding it or digging it out or knowing what I did with the thing. But I love just being able to take one of these things or even take it with me. Um, you know, like I'll take it to the retro computing shows and things like that and, uh, and just have something like this just ready to go. You can pop it in. Speaking of popping it in, yeah, I've got a bent pin there. Can't get that in there. Uh, so, um, yeah, just absolutely love that. Like I have that Commodore 64 diagnostic cartridge and just use it all the time. And I think one of the reasons why I use it is because I always know where it's at. Um, so I've got the soldering iron heated up. My area is kind of congested at the moment. Got a lot of stuff around here. Uh, work has been crazy busy. Um, so just got various projects going on so this is kind of a nice diversion for me um i do not make any money off of youtube when all said and done uh, i just do this kind of for the fun of it sponsored video or not um i just genuinely enjoy these kinds of things and i genuinely enjoy cartridges and i think i probably said it in a video before but i started off with atari and then went to computers and then everybody else around me had nintendo and i never actually had a regular nintendo system but i mean if you grew up on atari or nintendo or coleco or um any of those kind of things software was something that you had to go out and buy one at a time now growing up on uh tandy 1000 ex you know i may or may not have had some friends who had games who had blank floppy disks and you could you know for the most part there was some extreme copy protection and stuff like that but you could um copy and share games but if you were on a cartridge based platform you were pretty much out of luck the uh the game sharing was uh limited to sharing the physical cartridge i mean unless you had really techy friends and and i mean you know we take this stuff for granted now but um you know nobody had those kind of friends in the 80s who were making copies of these cartridges and stuff like that but um you know it, it's just at different times you couldn't you couldn't just make as many of these cartridges as you want so to me there's something kind of cool about it where i'm like fulfilling something that uh, would have been so fun to do and still fun to do to this day um, to actually make these cartridges in a way that you can do something with. Now, I know uh, you might think, well, this is just another cartridge video, but this does actually have a couple little fun features, little um, LEDs and stuff like that, and it's got some SMD parts on it. And we are going to, um, we're going to try, just for the heck of it, one of my more popular videos are those soldering tweezers uh, from Banggood, I believe. 
And uh, so one of the things about them is I've always only used them for desoldering, and I'll kind of show you how they work, but um, I've only used them for desoldering, but people have asked me before what they're like to solder with. So I think this would be kind of a good time to find out. So we're gonna try to see how bad it is to solder with those soldering tweezers. And I'll be honest, it may suck. Um, so anyway, I have put a, uh, an EEPROM socket on here for, you can see it can use one of several different size EEPROMs. And we're gonna put a capacitor on here and uh, most good designs will have a capacitor uh, for safety and for smoothing and things like that on the, uh, on the board right next to the socket. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on there. And then um, this has a reset switch, which I know the uh, C64 diagnostic cartridge and things like that have a reset switch and I've never, um, never used it, but I think I have some of those left over. I think I have the right ones next to me. Um, we're going to try putting one of those in there, see if it fits. And we will um, add the reset switch just for the heck of it. So, um, yeah, I've got a ton of little micro switches you may have seen in mailbag videos. Mailbag videos are probably my favorite ones to make. Um, here for you. Uh, open up all your stuff from China, but stuff from China has gotten more expensive, so I've done a little bit less uh, buying it and stuff, so we'll see. All right, let's find a switch and try to put this on there. So I think the idea is like, you know, if you need to reset, if something locks up, you can just push this button instead of, I, don't, I guess the Commodore 64 doesn't even have a reset button, does it? It just has a, a power switch. Um, I think there might have been some mods. I feel like one of my friends was pretty excited that he had a reset button on his Commodore 64 growing up. Um, let me know if that's a thing or not. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna put this button in there. Surprise, that fits. It actually went in really well. I thought it might be like wrestling it, but it just kind of popped right in. Uh, so we're gonna put this thing on there. And then we're gonna get to the fun part. For one thing, I don't love SMD soldering in general. Um, and then second of all, I don't like doing it on camera because it's even harder. I say this all the time, but soldering on camera, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I'm a very kind of focused person. And so trying to do, and I'm actually not bad at multitasking in general, but for some reason, soldering on camera, like thinking and talking are not my thing. Um, so there we go. So we've got a little button, we've got a little capacitor, we've got a little socket. And now we're gonna try some SMD work. All right, in case you're unfamiliar, um, these are the uh, 938D uh, desoldering tweezers. Now I'll bring them back in. I just wanted to show you the, it's got a holder and everything, they're stuck. Um, but these tweezers are designed to grab both sides of the, um, let me clean them real quick, grab both sides of the component and solder at the same time. And you know, SMD components like this are, uh, you know, have two sides on them. And it's really easy if you solder one side and the other side cools, then it kind of sticks up and things like that. So um, now this one, what makes this more challenging than a typical SMD job is that these little LEDs are actually on here backwards. And they're on here backwards for a reason. And that is because they are designed to represent um, the green and red lights on the 1541 drive. And so that is very cool, but that is also um, very difficult because, let me get an LED here, um, things like capacitors and stuff like that might be really thick, but things like resistors uh, are, and, and um, things like these LEDs are, really, really thin and don't have a big chunky contact pad on the other side. I mean, there's just a little bit of contact pad there. Um, so what you have to do is solder these things upside down. Um, now, so my main use for these things is desoldering and I use them for desoldering because a lot of times these components are, they're really hard to heat up on both sides and get the part to come off. So with this, you can heat up both sides and hopefully get it more level than you ever could with a normal soldering iron. Okay, so we're, we're heating, the heating up isn't the problem. Hey, this isn't bad. All right, so neither of my uh, floppy drives is in awesome shape. This one clearly has had some work done to it. And they are both the older variety that have uh, internal power supplies from my understanding. Uh, I have never owned a Commodore 64, so I've never hooked one of these things up myself. Let's make sure we get that going the right orientation. Uh, and we're gonna hook it up and we're gonna see 
what happens. No promises on the floppy drive side. These things are notoriously bad. Um, all I have done was plugged in the drive and made sure that it powered up. So we're gonna come in here to the user port side and I have done no initial testing whatsoever. I gotta uncover that so you guys can see the awesome LEDs that we got here. So maybe I'll stick this back this way a little bit so you can kind of see the disc, what's going on here. And all right, let's fire it up. All right, so we've powered the drive up. Um, and again, I know nothing about Commodore discs, uh, which is why I need some help fixing them, making sure that they work okay. So I'm gonna put in a brand new, new old stock disc. Okay, something's going on there. And uh, I'm gonna try to format it. I feel like that's the most obvious thing. Um, fast format, name, um, my name's Dan. <laughs> I don't really know what that matters. Uh, ID, okay, so I think the deal is when you do like the comma eight comma one thing, I think that's the disk ID. So I'm just gonna assume it's eight and see what happens. Hey! Okay, so I did that, 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 okay. All right, it's doing something. A little red light down here that I don't think you can actually see, but it is doing something, which is kind of surprising. Has a little bit of a smell, okay? 664 bo blocks free. I think that's a, I think that might be a successful format. All right, hey, we've got a very rare working 1541 drive, at least, you know, able to format. Uh, let's start doing things like alignment check. Let's do A. Now, I guess I have one question here. Um, if I do an alignment check on a disc that I formatted myself, then I think it would be more likely to think that the alignment is good. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F1 to exit. I'm just trying to use some logic here. And I'm going to put in a disc that was a game that I have, some uh, easy reader learning about words reading. Now it says it will destroy the data and that's fine. Um, you know, again, I can sacrifice this one here. Who knows if the disc is even good. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in and let this thing be my alignment check because it was at least written from the factory. So I'm gonna assume that it's, you know, all right. Uh, so uh, track read is the second to the left column and uh, on track percent is um, the little spade and then the little green thing is uh, the between track percent. So I think what that's telling me is that this disc is out of alignment or at least this drive is out of alignment. So that is probably not a good sign. Maybe we'll go ahead and do the thing again on the second disc and see if we get similar results. But as you can see, um, I think you want 100. And I think you want it to be able to read 100% difference between the two tracks. And this is telling me that that is not happening. So yeah, it looks like as you go further down, it looks like it's doing a little bit better. And I will say this drive has not been exercised in probably 20 to 30 years. So um, there's a chance that maybe, maybe um, as the drive started working, it freed up and started moving a little bit better. So I'm just going to try another disc here and uh, put it in and see if we get similar results. Yeah, so we are getting similar results where we're, our thing is not in alignment. And what it, I think the minus I would guess is that it's telling us that it's like short. The head isn't quite moving far enough over. Um, so, okay, I mean, it is what it is. So I do think I can do some things to maybe do some alignment. That's a whole nother video. Uh, or maybe I can't, maybe it just needs some lubrication. Maybe it needs something like that. I don't know, we'll find out. So at least, um, I think the big thing is, like I before I would have just said, oh, it doesn't work. Like it doesn't read this or whatever. But I actually have sort of empirical data right now that the first 10, 11 tracks of the disc are not really reading very well. Whereas you can tell the later ones are. Um, now there are some other tests that we can do. So we might as well play around with it. I do have one more drive that I'll fire up and see how the alignment works on that one. Um, I'm going to press the any key and let's come back here to F1 and go back to the home page. It is funny. It looks like it just does a complete system reset. I've never really tried this button. I don't really, I didn't, oh yeah. So that just sort of reboots the whole thing. I'm guessing it just shortens something. Um, so let's do a directory, see if it has a problem reading the directory. I mean, 
it is reading, so maybe my off a bit isn't really as off as, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there, um, isn't really as off as that thing would have made me think. Uh, so let's do here, let's do a, um, let's see what looks interesting. Let's do an error scan. Press return. Okay, see, it seemed like it did like a little bit of correction there. I'm guessing there's 40 tracks on these discs. Bad sector zero, okay. So I mean, we're getting some stuff going on here. Uh, let's see here, let's do speed check, performance test. Let's do a, let's do a performance test. Oh, formatting. I think there should be a warning there. <laughs> It did say at the bottom of the screen that it would destroy the discs, but the other ones didn't seem to be destroying the discs. Uh, this one apparently is. So we're going to let it do a performance test. Sounds like it's doing something new. Mechanical test okay. Uh, so it's doing some writing and stuff like that. I'm going to let this thing just do its thing and we'll let it go. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot of testing, and this drive actually passed, which I would say the ones with this little handle here uh, are the ones that are seem to be the, the most uh, unreliable. So I'm pretty impressed. I think really the only thing I can do now is grab another floppy drive and just test that one real quick. We'll at least do that alignment test and see how that one comes up. All right, so I don't want to use the disc that I formatted last time, which I think means that I should put this one in here, and I want to do that alignment check. Let's just see what we get. Okay, so that is good results. I think that's what it's supposed to look like. I think that basically what it's doing, if you picture, you know, going across the record, it's seeing, um, hey, I'm reading track one, and when I read track two, am I getting completely different data, or is the head just sort of a little bit to the left and reading a little bit of track one, a little bit of track two? So this drive is obviously in a lot better shape and is reading a lot better than the other one. And yeah, that one's perfect all the way through. So I think that's what you want to see. I do just for the heck of it. I want to have it try to read the disc that the other one formatted. I'm guessing it's going to be okay. I just realized these discs have two little holes here. I guess maybe because the drives are, oh, that's right. They're single sided drives. I didn't think about that. So they're notched on both sides. So you flip the disc over, man. I never, I don't think I ever had a single sided drive. Um, it's interesting. So let's see, is this one still going to read fine? Yeah, I mean, this one reads great. So um, I don't think I really need to go through the whole test on camera, but this thing is very, very cool. So this is the 1541 diagnostic cartridge. And one of the things about working on these old retro computers is that it's not like back in the day where if your floppy drive was a little bit jacked up, you could just run down the street and grab your friend's drive and try something out or whatever. Like you don't always have access to tons of other things to do these AB testing and things like this. Um, but what you do have is the access to things like this where you can run actual diagnostics that we would have loved to have back in the day and um, test this stuff kind of a little bit more empirically than we ever would have tested back in the day. So I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this project and uh, yeah, have a great day.